how would you um, kind of describe what we've got going on and how we differentiate ourselves? I think we really stand out with uh, how much we care uh, genuinely about like your whole health. And I like to say that at BC, we do a you know, whole health approach to everybody where it's like, I'm, we're not interested in just churning you in as much as we can. That tends to be what happens in group fitness. And that was my least favorite thing about group fitness. It's like, yes, of course we want more people to be moving their body. We know it's good for you. However, if we're only getting you into a system that then burns you out, you injure out and you're like, I can't go to Barry's five days a week because I have torn my hamstring because you guys didn't warm me up properly or you threw me from a rower to a treadmill and my hamstrings aren't prepped for that. And it's like, that kind of thing isn't taken into consideration, I don't think, at places like Orange Theory and Ber Berries, where we are able to do this because of you know our background and um, my education. And I love being able to help people actually find fitness enjoy it from that group fitness standpoint where it's like, yeah, we do fun things. Yeah. There's team things and community things and competitions, but then also you're going to be able to be in here, uh, for a long time. Mm. We're not going to burn you out. I want fitness for longevity. I don't want fitness for quick fixes or for, uh, injury out phases. You right. Know? And Sam cat, you've been going to the gym for years now. And, and you noticed like yourself, probably that most of the members go six, seven days a week. Yes. <clears throat> Myself included. I feel like uh, one of the things I love about the gym is that we do have, you know, every Monday is going to be leg day. Every Tuesday is going to be upper body day. And it's just kind of like you can almost plan your week around that. Like Carmen was saying, there's no burnout. I mean, still, I think in my, I'm a little bit competitive and psychotic. And Fridays <laughs> are definitely, I think, the hardest day of the week because it is full uh -huh. body. And it's more cardio and HIIT training and the thing I love about it is that, well, I go out on the road and I come back and the format has changed, which I feel like keeps things exciting, but it's also kind of familiar moves and familiar timing. And obviously the coaches can break it down for you, but it's just exactly like Carmen said, there's no burnout. I mean, that's not a thing because every day is different, but in a very, I feel like safe and productive way. Yeah. And the burnout topic. So hit, it's like the, the magic mm -hmm. word, right? Everybody mm -hmm. who works out, who, who, might not know as much about fitness. They all say they want to do hit classes, hit classes, hit classes, mm -hmm. and they want high intensity. And, and you feel like you got to be running a million miles an hour, mm -hmm. um, hop on the treadmill to get that workout. But we kind of have a different approach. And that's kind of what you've been able to drill into our brains and everybody else's. Um, you know, what would you say to somebody out there who's listening about hit and how much and high intensity workouts you should be doing a week in recovery? Yeah. So I think, you know, our approach, of course, I'm going to be biased at BC is the best in terms of two days of high intensity training or conditioning style training or full body intense training, whatever you want to call it, is the perfect recipe just because, um, you know, I'm not going to lie to anybody like about I know that sometimes it feels better or it feels like you've accomplished more if you just are going hard, 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 hard all the time. But we have to be able to think outside of just that. 20 to 30 minutes of exercise that you're doing and think about, okay, but what are my goals long-term? I want to feel better every day. I want to move better every day. And hopefully when I'm 40, I want to be doing like marathons or half marathons or handstands or swimming or whatever it is that you want to do. And if I'm only giving you high intensity, I'm not going to be able to get you there. You might get a a uh, rush from doing that high intensity on the day of. However, you might also then go home and crash on your couch and eat two times as many calories because you're doing too much high intensity. And it's like, I want to make sure that we're telling people the value of strength training. You know, it's like, that's what we push at BC. That's something I'm very passionate about is the fact that there is nothing better for long-term sustainable fat loss, performance, longevity, than strength training. And it's like, that's why we push that so hard there. That's why you're going to probably do goblet squats every single week, like every single week. Cause I'm not, you know, we don't need to try and convince you by switching things up all the time. It's like, instead, let's actually track your progress. Let's play with tempo, time under tension. Let's play with, you know, your rep range. Let's play with maybe adding a little more on your range of motion, adding in a step or something. But not changing what we know to be true when you look at the data from any kind of um, fitness research, which is that like 
we have to do the same exercises and we have to just get better at those exercises. And so I want people to have that. I want people to understand that and then know that those results will continue to happen for them then long term. Uh, working with a lot of females, do you still feel like there is the myth out there that, you know, women are like, I don't want to lift heavy weights. I don't want to get too bulky mm -hmm. and I don't want to strength train. Yeah. Do you feel like you see that a lot still? I think I think at our community, we've done a really good job of like, I will say it's it's such a fun thing to look around the room in there and see mainly chicks all lifting heavy weight. But we did have to work hard for that. It is definitely kind of a you know, it's unfortunate that it's still marketed to us all the time as like lose weight, lose weight, lose weight, rather than like get strong, feel better, move better, you know, do something that you want to be in terms of movement that you're not capable of yet. And uh, I think hopefully the trend is going in the direction of like, we understand that, you know, strength training is where it's at. Being strong will get you your aesthetic goals that you're after. Um, it'll just do it in a better, more sustainable fashion. And honestly, probably be better for your mental health as well. Yeah. You know, it's like, I think we've done a good job at BC at getting rid of that stigma. Like I said, it's one of my favorite things to look around the room and be like, all chicks lifting like we have the heaviest kettlebells out we have some of the heaviest dumbbells out and even when we get you know the newer ones in the nice thing is you're usually going to be in a group with somebody who's a veteran who is pulling out you know machine meg pulling out the 60 pound dumbbells for a chest press and it's like i think that really helps go a long way i think our female members helps help confirm that you know what i mean that lifting heavy it doesn't matter what you do, you know, I, I, in the beginning of my career, I did get a lot of people being like, I don't want my arms to look like yours. And I'm like, your arms will never look like mine. Just like mine will never look like <laughs> yours. Like, like, like it doesn't matter if you train the exact same way as me, you're not, you know, I could just have these arms, man. Like you're just not going to get those. And the idea that if you lift something heavy, you're all of a sudden going to be Arnold is like, listen, unless you're taking gear, you're not, yeah. <laughs> like, I assure you. You're going to be you, your size.